the idea was to design the perfect solar module. You don't have to have arms like an orangutan to put it onto the roof. Yeah, the problem of you're trying to sell a 320 watt panel, even though it was a European panel, to an Australian market that had 400 watt panels. Bigger isn't always better. As uh... <laughs> Thanks, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I expect to have panels up on my warehouse roof testing your claims about it being better. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. I know your reputation in the industry, Mark. <laughs> Okay, I've got something a little bit different for you today. I've got an interview with a panel manufacturer, a brand new panel manufacturer that's coming to Australia. Really interesting story behind it. We're not just talking about your dime a dozen Chinese panel manufacturer. Uh, we're talking about a panel called Maya Burger. And I've brought in my mate Brendan that I've known for many years. And he's joined Maya Burger and is bringing it into Australia. And Tim, who's over from Germany for a bit of a visit. So thanks for coming in, fellas. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So, Brendan, I'm going to start off with you and we're going to tell a little bit of a, a funny story about your background. You just love startup, the startup idea, don't you? Yeah, correct, yeah. Um, yeah, listen, I think for me it's, uh, it just makes sense. It fits my strengths very nicely. So you and I met um, when I first started in the PV industry pretty much. So when I was working for Amber Pulse, I moved on then to a, a, another, which I guess is my foray into the, the panel industry. So I was working for a German manufacturer at the time called SolarWatt. Yep, yep. Solar what? You had the problem of you're trying to sell a 320 watt panel, even though it was a European panel, to an Australian market that had 400 watt panels. It's a, a little bit uphill, right? Correct, upper battle. You've got a little bit of a different twinkle in your eye now, I think. You know, I kind of feel like you found your product. Yeah, thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think where I am now in the company, uh, my burger just makes perfect sense. So it's a, a quality product, um, both in our company structure and, and, and the technology that we use. Yep. So we're a Swiss publicly listed company, so a 70-year-old um, company. Mm. We've been around, obviously, for a very long time. Been in the PV space for a very long time as well. Um, German-manufactured cell and a German-manufactured module, it, it just it feels right, I have to say. Yeah, sure. And so, Tim, I've just met you. Um, we were actually down in Sydney together, but kind of kept on passing ways and <laughs> didn't meet. But you've come over from Germany. Yeah, that's and, true. Um, and you've... You've joined um, Meyer Burger quite a, while, a little while ago, a few years ago? Yeah, two years ago, yep. actually. Yeah. Okay. I'm in the German solar industry now for 15 years already, so I'm kind of used of basically having s a really good product from Germany. That was yeah. my start some 15 years ago. Which was what panel? Uh, solar World. I like trying to bring really made-in-Germany products in the solar industry to the market, basically creating value and creating jobs in Germany. Yeah, and there probably has not been a panel in the market that has got such a full story from what I, I gather around Meyer Burger. We'll delve into that a little bit later, but, well, maybe this question even you can answer that. Why Why do you think all of these other panels, Solar Watt, Solar World, um, Hanover... Yeah, no, that wasn't a... <laughs> that oh, didn't count. Um, <laughs> that Chinese panel that tried to sell, sound German. Yeah. Um, but what, there's been a lot of panels, European-made panels, that have tried to get started here um, but they haven't made it why do you think this is going to be different yeah that was my question with my job interview with Maya Burger also three years oh, ago right, okay. um, so um, big difference is that Maya Burger is not just a module manufacturer uh, Maya Burger has been in the solar industry for 25 years already and we have been there probably most of your customers probably you uh, have been using Maya Burger technology already without knowing so um, the point is that we used to produce technology that all the manufacturers in the world are using now to, to put modules um, um, out of the factory. So we are basically the backbone of the change to technology called monoperk, which was a new thing some uh, 15 years ago, and it's now basically the standard. Yep. And this is based on a uh, development Maya Boga made, and we sold all these machineries to around the world. The next big thing for us has been a technology called HJT, Heterojunction. Um, and with that, we basically three years ago decided to not sell that techno technology anymore to yep. all the manufacturers in the world, but do it on our own. Right. And that's a big difference. Yeah, okay. And we'll get into HJT a little bit later. It's a pretty interesting technology, which is basically a, a way that you make the cell, yep. um, like N-type, uh, P-type, and all those kind of differentiations. Um, HJT is a... Is, is a pretty cool technology. Yeah. You guys, which I was pr pretty surprised to hear, that you guys developed it. Uh, well, we, we brought it to mass production, I would say. Brought it to mass, uh, yeah. The thing is, it's always easy to... I mean, if you, if you look into the newsletters around the world, there's always a new world record 
each day, each week from some manufacturer. Yeah, we do all that. All we do that also. We also have some world <laughs> records at some yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end, it's a different thing if you want to just have it into the lab or if you're really able to put it into mass production. Yep. Um, and the thing is, HJT has been around for some while. We have been developing that since 2012. Yep, so yep, for sure. more than 10 years, um, our R&D guys in Switzerland um, put a lot of effort into bringing that technology to the market. And basically, three years ago, we decided now it's time. Now let's go on that. And that's where we're good at. Um, yep. And that's different for each technology. Some's never, some never make it. Um, and some have, for example, Mona Perk. That was a thing from Maya Boga. Yep. Next big thing, maybe we'll talk about that, is current now, um, let's say, technology battle between Topcon and, and HJT. We'll go down there later, yeah. yeah and uh, is, um, we are 100% sure that HJT is the way to go. And combined with our smart wire connection technology, which is another uh, trick on there because HJT itself is easy, has been there. Mm. But uh, the, the tricky part is to have this technology on the cell level mm. being good in the module as well not only in the lab not only in the Let, let's go there because i think that's a really interesting one right yeah. so this is your cell like this is just any cheap rubbish cell you know um, <laughs> but normally historically you would have bus bars which is where the ele electricity goes from one cell to another and you just have several solder points right yeah true and so the difference with your smart wire technology is yeah absolutely uh, let, let me take that it's pretty easy. You see what happens um, when you solder. It hurts the cell a yeah. little bit already oh. in production. And uh, what we do is a uh, te technology called smart wire connection technology. So we don't solder. Um, mm. we basically, we laminate um, smart wires onto the cell. And then while laminating, so basically putting the cells all together in one line, producing a module, um, that's already done. We don't solder. We don't hurt the cell whilst producing the module. And if tell me if I'm wrong about this, but what I understand is instead of having, I don't know, half a d dozen points of contact or whatever it might be, it's the whole wire is exactly. contacting the whole way. It's sort of forming into the, exactly. the cell. Yeah. Exactly, and it's not a flat bus bar. It's a, it's a wire, which is better for some other technical details as well. Um, and yeah, it is already exactly in place where it should be. One side part of that, it's really good looking. Yeah. Um, but the idea behind this is to have this perfect HJT cell being as perfect as it is also on the module, also on the roof. Excellent. Okay, let's st step back a little bit. Go so ahead. entering the Australian market, and this might be a question more for you, Brendan, being being head heading up Australia. Yep. Um, who, who are you competing with? You're competing with the, you know, ch cheap Chinese panels? Yep, no, clear. You it's wouldn't have thought so? <laughs> no, no, listen, we certainly won't yeah. fit in that category. Yeah. Um, our competitors will be the premium modules, yeah. I think, that, that are in this space. So really, for me, um, SunPower being quality product. That's um, debatable, but you, you can say that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me out of that discussion. <laughs> um, uh, and, of course, REC Pure, yeah. um, as well as the module. So I always bring that point up, of course. The, the technology in the REC Pure um, was a technology that we developed. So the HJT smart wire technology was something that we actually developed um, and sold off to REC in mm -hmm. 2019. Um, so the technology that you see in the Pure R is based on our technology and our machinery. So yeah. I think definitely we will be uh, obviously a competitor of theirs in this yeah. space, but I think there are some yeah, some quite clear points of, of difference in our product. Obviously yeah. country of origin, country of manufacture. So REC, I, I would say, we, we sell REC Alpha Pure. Yep. Um, I think the best panel on the market currently and you know so it's back when lg was here they were like the top players yeah. sunpower i think historically were the top players um q cells maybe when they bring out their um, q tron panel that's going to be one of those those top players so you know what i spoke talking about technology it's not only cell technology which i thought was really interesting when i went over to the rec factory we saw how they basically got the silicon put it in big crucibles turned it into this big block of silicon and that was pretty cool to see but then when they got that block that's this big and started slicing it like a loaf of bread. Absolutely. You're thinking, how, do, how the heck? Who, who came up with that idea and who was it? You know, yeah. Maya Burger. It wasn't me, but it was <laughs> my, <laughs> was, was my burger. So yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it is a diamond wire saw. So yeah. really, the diamonds that are cutting these, uh, this big block is called of ingot, um, putting it into small slices of wafers. And it's really, it needs to be 100% accurate. Otherwise, you will have at the end, some cracks in the wafer and then in the cell and then in the module. So this needs to be really, really precision 
machinery, which is yeah, where my book is good at. This was by the by the way, this was in 1999. 99. Uh, wow. So that yeah. was our step into the solar industry a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. With, a, with a background in watch in machinery for the watchmaking industry as well, which is obviously precision. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It just. I, I guess with the background there, it paints a picture of why we can do something so precise mm. with the PV industry as well. And so a lot of the machines you made are being used. And when I talk to people that know the industry yeah. really uh, thoroughly, you know, panel manufacturers and stuff like that, they understand who Meyerberger is, right? It's, it's where the machines are made. Now let's step it um, back to HJT technology, a bit of a mouthful. So hetero junction technology? Yeah, not yeah. a marketing uh, slogan, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, so, well, the thing, uh, the, the idea is, um, yeah, like we've spoken before, is to have this perfect cell in the lab, but basically make it work also on in the module and then on the roof. So you have this different type of wafers. Um, the older ones are basically called P-type. The new generation is N-type. That's what LG did, yep. Um, yep. for example. And the idea is tend to push put an additional layer of so-called amorphous silicon on top and below. Yeah. Um, this is the heterojunction. So basically to have some additional layer with a different structure. It's also just silicon, so no toxics yeah. or anything like that. But um, to have this different structure on top and below that protects the cell perfectly and also makes it behave differently mm -hmm. uh, on the roof. So yeah, at the end you'll have uh, a module that loses less electricity when getting hot. Yep. So yep. the idea is to, with this additional amorphous silicon layer, um, you have a better uh, called so-called temperature coefficient, which means from nameplate power, what peak, it loses less um, on a hot a sunny day, and therefore producing more kilowatt hours of electricity yep. compared to the module nameplate power, for example. And different um, topics, so basically it protects the cell over the lifetime, so it just loses less energy over the lifetime, over 25, 30 years, over the time you want the module to work on your roof. Like if I, yeah, you'll see a bit of a difference? Of course, of yeah. course. I will, compared to other technologies, yes. Um, I would say, well, HJT will have a couple of percent better yield, basically. But even then, if, if, if you only have 2% better yield, it's a lot over the lifetime of the module. Mm -hmm. yep. And the, the difference gets bigger the longer mod modulus on the roof because we just lose less energy because the, the cell is that perfectly uh, basically protected. And that degradation is something that I've actually checked out recently on our systems going back to our systems that we started monitoring in 2015 and watched them over the year. A big part of it is the weather patterns and how they degrade, but you can see where they peak at differently. Degradation is a, is a big thing. Yeah. I was telling you earlier about a, a, a panel that I... Uh, tested years ago and it lost 10% within like six months, you know, so <laughs> de yeah, degradation is, is a big thing and that's, and those 1% is, like you're saying, especially when you put them on top of each other, yep. they do add up over time, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so another thing we've been talking about is glass glass panels. You, so you guys are going to bring in two different panels? Yep, correct. We'll have a, a glass back sheet module, um, so I guess a, a standard module that's on the market these days and then we will have a glass glass module as well. So glass, so traditionally you have basically a frame around the panel, you've got glass in the front to protect the cell and then on the back you have just a piece of plastic, an EVA, yep. right? So you're going to bring in one of those to the market, uh, which is basically the standard technology, but you're going to bring in also... Oh. Uh, uh, may, uh, may, uh, may I correct? Of course not. Of course we're not just putting some plastics on the backside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we do... Uh, what we do, uh, not a lot of uh, companies do that. We put some aluminum layer right. inside our back sheet as well. So although it's just a back sheet module, it's designed to be the best one out there. There's no um, humidity coming through it. It's an additional aluminum layer within the back sheet. Is that part of the EVA? Yeah. Okay, right. Interesting, okay. Yeah, because there's back sheets and there's back sheets, isn't there? So it's not just a piece of white plastic. That's a little bit... Um, <laughs> talking at the end. I need to just to jump in because yeah. of the term plastic. I hate that. And yeah. But you're right. Yeah. Uh, there are products out like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but... And we have had massive problems in the industry because people, yeah, I think they got old pa pa uh, plastic bags and no, not quite, <laughs> but uh, you know, but if you put cheap plastic on the back, the cheap EVA, let's use a correct term, then um, it's not going to work the same. But yeah, yeah. I never knew you guys had a technology around that too. Okay. I've been in the industry nearly 15 years too and, and we've gone back to system jobs that we've installed, generally speaking on the cheaper Chinese panels and you get water ingress and you can literally see that there's water underneath the glass and then you get a short circuit there effectively, you know, yeah. the panel's short, shorting out and, and killing the inverter sometimes. Um, it's a real issue um, and glass glass is going to 
hopefully solve that issue? Yeah, I think I've, I've been a, an advocate for glass glass, obviously, from where I was previously with SolarWatt. We, glass glass, well, glass as a back sheet, to me, whilst I think our back sheet module is obviously unique in its own way, and so therefore it's beneficial, I still think having glass glass gives you another element of security mm. um, when you're installing something. So obviously it's um, stronger, from the module perspective, you've got um, the same thickness piece of glass on the front as you do on the back, so it gives it added stability in that sense. Um, and longevity. So it, glass is, the you're not going to get that degradation that you would get out of anything else. So from something that will last, sitting up on your roof in any kind of elements for any length of time, you know, our warranty is 30 years, uh, I think it will be you know, well and truly safe up on your roof. I, I honestly believe from a water ingress perspective, from anything like that, if you can choose a glass glass back sheet or a glass back sheet, I think you're making a good choice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. A little bit heavier, those panels. Though. A couple of, you know, the installers aren't going to love it. No, it's, 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 yeah, I, can't, I mean, I can't argue that point. It is yeah. heavier. Yeah, it's not, it's not a deterrent. I don't think it's a deterrent. So it's still sitting at around 24 kilos, um, which I guess is, you know, a testament to the size of our product as well, which yeah. we can get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will get to that in the second power class and stuff, yeah. Cool. Um, but just to be clear, the first glass glass panel that I did was just glass. It was just like frameless. carrying a windscreen. Yeah, frameless, yeah. So this, just so we don't freak out all no, the installers here. <laughs> so, yeah. The number, the no, I mean, I, listen, I haven't been in the industry anywhere near as long as yourself and I haven't put anything up on a roof, so I apologise in advance to the installers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Having no frame, I've only ever heard horror stories. Yeah. So I just, yeah, listen, there's a standard frame, so 35 mil frame um, on the module itself. It, yeah. You're not going to have those same issues. And it is becoming a bit more common. To be honest, I, I was saying to you before that I was a l little bit nervous when I saw Trina bring out a glass glass panel and yeah. thinking, oh, I don't want to be the guinea pig that installs something yeah. that Trina puts out like that. But, you know, knowing my burger's done it, to be honest with you, it gives me a little bit more confidence that it's not... Um, yeah, I, we've been, yeah, we're not going to dive into something that we haven't uh, thoroughly looked at ourselves. I think the foundation of us as a Swiss company is, you know, the R&D aspect to our products um, is extremely good. It's not just all about first to market and bigger is better, which is a great segue uh, to, t <laughs> to talk about your power class. So yeah. back when you were at the SolarWatt days, I remember you coming to me and going, Oh, I got this panel for you. It's n this is not too long ago. A three hundred and twenty watt panel. I'm like, what? We're doing four hundred watt panels. What are you talking about? Three hundred and twenty watts. Now I had the same reaction when I said, "What's the power class of your panel?" And it so it we're sitting somewhere between th three eighty to four hundred, obviously depending on the module. Yeah, sure. And so now the market's moved on, and we're talk we're doing four fifteen. So there's even four forties in the market at the moment. Um, but and I'm like, are you kidding me? But it's a different story this time, isn't there? So yeah, I agree. I'm going to pass it to him, but bigger isn't always better. As uh Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. No, well, when we, we, we decided to build up a module production site on the cell production site three years ago, and basically the idea was to, to design the perfect solar module. Um, and when doing that, we decided to not jump onto in bigger, it's better, and pff, pff, mm. just really increasing nameplate power par by two putting a two square meters module onto the market and then being claiming, hey, we have 560, whatever. The idea is to have the perfect module for the installer as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not as big as an average 425 module and therefore the efficiency is better. It's just not the nameplate power. We have mm -hmm. a smaller module. It's just 1.4 meters wide. So you don't have to have arms like an orangutan to put it onto the roof. And um, coming from there, it's when it's smaller, you might even be able to put some more modules onto a standard residential house. Mm. And therefore, for your customer, the power of the overall system will be bigger yeah. when you're being able to put one or two more modules onto it. We're not talking about five mil difference. This is what I like about it, is that panels are now, they're getting bigger and bigger. And a, a one meter used to be a standard width of a panel. And then recently they've jumped up to a 1.1, which is where they're getting to that 415 and then 430 and 440 watt panels. And then they creep taller and taller. But yours are basically one meter, 1040, right? Yeah. By in, uh, which is about 100 mil shorter than your standard, our common panel now, and it's 1760. Yeah. yeah. So it's about 40 mil longer, so a little bit longer, um, but a whole lot narrower. So I think not only installers are going to love that, carrying less of a panel, to, you know, less of a wind sail when they're trying to get up on the roof, you know. Um, but our sales guys who design the system, you know, and are trying to fit those panels on a roof, they've got better jigsaw pieces to fit on the roof, so they're going to get more 
more power up there. Well, at least the same or maybe more power up on the roof. So, yeah. Yep, correct. Sh- should be yeah. like that, yeah. Okay, I think there's one other thing that I think is really different and unique about M- M- Baja Burger, at least in the panel manufacturing industry. is, uh, And maybe I'll... I'll um, I'll put it this way, I was talking to Martin Hackle about Fronius, who, who heads up Fronius over in Austria. He's really passionate about uh, buying everything, you know, re- recycled aluminium, buying chips from Europe, you know, the, the smallest little pieces. He just wants to get everything within Europe, um, which I love that story. Like, with, we're, we, <laughs> the world is changing, you know, um, especially with the war over in Ukraine um, uh, and, you know, the, the issues going on with China and, and the rest of the world. You guys are on that same vein that yeah. it's European only, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah. um, uh, we, we love what Fronio does. Um, mm, yeah. and they're basically on, on the right path uh, as an innovation manufacturer, and we want to be like that basically as a module manufacturer. So again, uh, when we started uh, building up um, the factories, by the way, which were there before, uh, mm. we were producing. We are now producing modules where Solar World was producing. We are producing now our cells where Q cells. To oh, have is that right? Okay. Production yeah. site because Q cells was German based, yeah. Uh, ex- exactly. Now it's just uh, well, yeah, just a German brand, not a German company anymore, sadly. Um, but basically, we are using this uh, this site for our cell production, and by doing that, of course, we we reached out to all the suppliers that still are there in Europe, mm-hmm. basically. So. Um, the, the idea is to really have a full European supply chain behind us as well. Yeah. So, well, we, we gave a very horrible task to our, um, our, to our purchasing department to really look into potential suppliers. And at the end, they came up with uh, more than 300 suppliers who are available in Europe. Wow. And basically, yeah. 96% of our suppliers are from Europe, 91% out of Germany. So really, it is an, an effort to re vitalize this European solar industry. Yeah. It's not about just Maya Burger, it's about all the companies behind us. So for yeah. example, we are sourcing our uh, wafers. Wait, and so wafer, that's a cell, right? Yeah. Wafer is before you do that, right? The, just the basic part. Yeah. The slice of bread is a wafer. Before you put, put, put the peanut butter on it. Yeah. <laughs> Ex- exactly, exactly. <laughs> this wafer um, is coming out of Norway um, right. from two companies called Norson. Um, and the other one being Norwegian Crystal, who are ramping up together with us, basically, the right. production. Um, and they source from a company called Vaca um, out of Germany. So the polysilicon, yep. uh, the, the crystalline silicon, is coming out of Germany as well. And then there are other bits and pieces of the industry around, adding up to 91% of our suppliers, basically, being from Germany. Yep, yeah, okay, excellent. Um, yeah, it's really it's a really good story. I think I can see why you're a little bit exo- excited, Brendan, <laughs> about your about your new job, your new role, yeah. bringing it into Australia. A yeah. couple of months away, so we're talking. What are we talking? July or August, something like that. Correct. I'd say we're talking July, August, there okay. or thereabouts. So I expect to have panels on the water, containers on the water within the next couple of weeks, and two months on the water or thereabouts. But yeah, to so I expect to have panels up on my warehouse roof, testing your claims about it being better. Two, two or three months. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is, um, I- and we're willing to do that. So I, I completely, you know, I know your reputation in the industry, Mark, and it'd be ideal, I think, to be able to put something here, um, test it, and then yeah, see what happens. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting. I've I've been meaning to do it with REC, like I was saying to you before, but I'll, I'll um, I'd love to do it with you guys. And you know, testing it against a good panel, Q cells. It's a good panel, sure. but just lifting it like you guys are doing, lifting the standard all the time. It'll be really interesting to see it. So technically, yes, you're 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 accurate. And yeah. then I just to highlight that point again, the sustainability. sustainability yeah, yeah. So I think from us, from a company perspective, how deep we go down that path yep. um, to make a sustainable module and to make ethical choices when we're looking at our supply chain, when we're going down that direction, it just technically yes, this is why we're good and we know that and we can advertise that fact. But ethically, sustainability. They're, they're key points to our company moving forward and bringing the, um, the manufacturing back to Europe. Sounds like a great product. Looking forward to it, to it hitting uh, the Australian market and my warehouse roof. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thanks for coming in, fellas. Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah. Thanks.